All right. So we touched on a lot of different ideas in the last video, and we're going to need to do a number of examples to straighten this out. So let's take a look at exercise two on page 185 of this section, 2.3. They're asking us to use something called synthetic division to find the quotient and remainder when the polynomial 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus x plus 2 is being divided by the polynomial x plus 2. Well, here's what they mean by synthetic division. I'm going to list off the coefficients of the numerator here. So 2 minus 3, this is a minus 1, remember, and then a plus 2. Then I'm going to make some fencing around half of these coefficients, around the left and bottom of these coefficients. And instead of listing off the coefficients here, I'm going to set this denominator equal to zero and solve. So I get x equals minus two, and minus two is what I put on the outside here. So on the same level as the coefficients of the numerator, just on the left of this vertical bar I have. Now synthetic division proceeds as follows. Start with the first coefficient of the numerator, in this case 2. Drop it down below the line, below the uh, horizontal fencing. So we're just going to drop the 2. You multiply 2 times the minus 2 on the outside and get minus 4. And you write that above the horizontal line underneath the next coefficient of the numerator. Add your way down. Minus 3 plus minus 4 is a minus 7. And repeat. So to get back up above the horizontal line, I'm going to take minus 2, the number on the outside, multiply it by this next number, minus 7. That's going to get me 14. And that's what I put above the horizontal line. To get back down, I add 14 plus minus 1 will be a 13. Multiply 13 by minus 2 and write that below the next coefficient. Minus 2 times 13 is a minus 26. And when you add, you get minus 24. So down below the horizontal line, we have 2, minus 7, 13, and minus 24. And I've put a line between 13 and minus 24 here because what's on the left of the line is the quotient. And what's on the right side of the line is the remainder. Now the quotient is a lot like how, you know, we just have to do what we did for the numerator, taking the coefficients in order to do synthetic division. We have to do that in reverse. These are the coefficients. And whenever you do synthetic division, you drop a degree. So it's not going to be x cubed. It's going to be x squared. So it'll be 2x squared minus 7x plus 13 and the remainder is a minus 24. That's the quotient and remainder when you divide 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus x plus 2 dividing that by x plus 2. 
So let's look at a few more. Number four, we're dividing x cubed plus x squared minus 13x plus 2. That's being divided by the quantity x minus 3. So I read off the coefficients of the numerator. So since there's no number in front of x cubed, it's the coefficient is 1. Same thing is true with x squared. And then I see a minus 13. And then the next number I see, the next coefficient I see is 2. Draw out my fencing here. Now it's not minus, you know, x minus 3 I put on the outside. I set that equal to 0 and solve. And whatever x equals, that's the number I put on the outside. So when x minus 3 is 0, that tells us that x equals 3. So 3 is the number that goes on the outside here. Now, starting with the first, the leading coefficient of the numerator, the 1 here, we drop that down, then multiply by 3, getting 3, and write that underneath the next coefficient of the numerator, in this case the x squared coefficient. Add to get down, 1 plus 3 is 4, multiply to get back up, 3 times 4 is 12, and we're going to write that under the minus 13. So add minus 13 and 12 to get minus 1 down below. Multiply to get back up, 3 times minus 1 is minus 3. Add 2 and minus 3 to get minus 1 below. So we started with x cubed. This is going to be x squared. We always go down a degree. So this is 1x squared plus 4x minus 1 with a remainder of minus 1. So this is the quotient and the remainder when you do this division. All right, let's go over one more. So number six, we're looking at x to the fourth minus 5x cubed minus 3x squared plus 10. And that's being divided by x minus 1. All right. Now, there's something special about this numerator here. Namely, we've got an x to the fourth, an x cubed, an x squared, but there's no x term. You know, like in 4, there was an x cubed, x squared, an x term, and then a constant. Well the way you deal with that is to think of the x term as having a coefficient of 0. So we're going to think of this polynomial as x to the fourth minus 5x cubed minus 3x squared plus 0x plus 10. And so now our coefficients are 1 for x to the fourth minus 5 for x cubed, minus 3 on x squared, 0 on x, and 10 for the constant. And you have to include these so-called placeholders, these extra zeros, otherwise everything's going to be messed up. So it's not x minus 1. If we set that equal to 0, x minus 1 is going to be 0 when x equals 1. So with 1 on the outside here, that's what we're going to be multiplying by 
to go from below the horizontal line to above. But we start by dropping the leading coefficient, the x to the fourth coefficient, which in this case is 1. So we do the number on the outside, 1, times the number at the bottom, 1, to get 1 and write that, <coughs> excuse me, and write that above the horizontal line underneath the x cubed coefficient, minus 5. We add minus 5 plus 1 to get minus 4. Multiply 1 times minus 4 to get back up underneath the x squared coefficient, which is minus 3. So we have minus 3, minus 4, add those together to get below the bar, and we have minus 7. Multiply 1 times minus 7 to get back up underneath the x coefficient, the coefficient on x, 0. Add 0 and minus 7 to get below. That's just minus 7. Multiply 1 times minus 7 is minus 7 to get below the constant term 10 and then add the constant term 10 with minus 7 to get the remainder of 3. Now this had x to the fourth as the degree of the numerator. So our result is not x to the fourth but x cubed. So this is 1x cubed minus 4x squared minus 7x minus 7 and the remainder is 3. So that's the technique. And then in the next video, we're going to talk about how we use this with the remainder theorem and the factor theorem to evaluate polynomials and find their factors.